Okay, we start uh, section 20.4 Fourier convolution theorem. And uh, we will write down the definition of a convolution uh, between two functions directly. Um, but later on, you will see that the motivation for defining a convolution mainly is to take a Fourier transform of a part of between two functions which is very common when you do Fourier transform, you very often you take Fourier transform of a product of two functions. So, and then you, you end up getting a convolution. So we write, uh, the, write down the convolution. So you, if you have two function fx and gx, so then uh, you can define a convolution f and this symbol f star g, now that's, this is still a function of x, both f and g are function of x from a full domain. So negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so uh, it's defined as one of a square root of two pi, which is again by convention. Uh, some people define without that or with one over two pi and things like that. So. And then it's defined as this uh, g, y, f, x minus y, dy. Okay, so, and quite often you, you uh, check right away that the order of f and g doesn't matter. It's, you can change f, uh, the order of f and g, so, um, that's not a problem. So it, uh, the f, this operation is convealed between f and, f and g, the order f and g. And then this is defined uh, as uh, one dimension for the one dimension case. And similarly for higher dimension, you can define, say if this is in three dimension, then the factor becomes two pi, three half, and the, the integration becomes a volume integration, G, uh, I guess your textbook is using R, so let's change that to R. G L pi and F R minus L pi, D Q L pi. Okay, so you can do that. And uh, likewise, for any dimension, you can do the same thing. Now, by this definition, we can calculate the uh, Fourier transform of this function. And the final result will be uh, quite simple. So, and that's part of the motivation. So if we talk, uh, just use the original symbol, which uh, the textbook change, but doesn't matter, G. So let me do the T. This uh, the Fourier transform of this convolution. So by definition, you just uh, substitute this, this, this function this function, oops, this function into the definition of your Fourier transform, so one of a, one of a square root of two pi and integrate. And in this equation, your textbook is a, a little strange to use the T little t as, uh, as the uh, variable for the transform, Fourier transform, usually we'll, for x we'll use k, but that doesn't matter. So, uh, so it's dx and this function putting inside. Okay, and then multiply by the 
exponential function i t x or i x t t t x. Okay, so and now that is uh, uh, just by direct uh, definition. Now you can um, change the order of all these uh, integration. Like uh, there's a dy gy. We let's take the dy out and let's get the gy here and multiply by e i t y dy. Okay, and so we add the exponential function i e to the i t y. So we sub we need to subtract uh, this one from the exponential function, the other exponential function here. So, okay. So the other part is uh, d x. So one over two pi f x minus y. E I T X, we need to minus I T Y, so it becomes I T X minus Y. Now this is D X. Okay. But then uh, when we do a, the, the integration, D X is just the same as D X minus Y. Okay. And now we, we can identify the first one as the Fourier transform of this little g function, and the second one is the Fourier transform of the f function f. I think this is just uh, g, and we define this as capital G t. And this is capital f t. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Kind of the motivation why you define a convolution this way because once you define a convolution this way, then uh, the Fourier transform of a convolution is just the product of the Fourier transform of the two function. Okay, so that kind of simple. And then uh, due to the symmetry between Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform. Uh, just uh, a little bit later in the section, we'll just do the inverse. So the product of two function, if you have product of two function, you get the, do the Fourier transform, you get a convolution between their Fourier transform. So pretty, pretty much symmetric to here. Uh, we'll, we'll write that down when we talk about that later. But uh, so, the, just for, for now, the convolution, the, take the Fourier transform, you get the product of the Fourier transform of the two function. Okay, so uh, if you write, write it out explicitly, it means that uh, this definition, just write it out explicitly. And this, uh, this is uh, like by the out of inverse Fourier transform. So this is uh, and so this function gy f x minus y will be um, square root of two pi times the inverse transform of that. And the reason we put the square of two pi to the other side because uh, then we'll um, cancel the one over square of two pi in three inverse transform. So we can just write the integration. So you have g t f t and e to the minus i x t d t. Okay, so this is. Uh, uh, another way to write down the this the fact uh, convolution will give you uh, the the free transform is given by the free part of free transform of the two function. Okay, so likewise, this is for one D. Likewise for three D. So the volume integration of G R pi 
f o minus o pi d o pi will be equals to uh, now you you are integrating a, in a k space your f k g k f k this capital f and g is on the free transfer or little f and little g okay so um, the e to the minus i k dot o t k oh using the notation dqk okay so that's uh that's the the convolution theorem okay so now uh, we'll um, divide the so-called Percival relation or Percival theorem, which is uh, basically using this convolution theorem, but uh, now we evaluate at x equals zero. So if we set x equals zero, then uh, gy f minus y dy. Okay, so that equals to integration of just a Fourier transform. Okay, so that is um, the direct consequence of this um, the convolution theorem, right? And then uh, one thing is uh, for a real function, um, the, uh, there's a relationship between the, between the negative of, uh, just taking the negative argument and the, the um, and the Fourier and the complex conjugate. So you write this as uh, just write like uh, if you consider this complex conjugate function instead of uh, instead of f to negative y, then what you will get is. Uh, the complex conjugate of the Fourier transform. Okay, so, um, so this is a uh, part of the property that we talk about uh, and we will talk mention about the property of, of Fourier transform in this uh, section three. Uh, this is by equation by 20.51 would say that uh, we had to change all to minus all, take the complex conjugate of Fourier transform is the just the complex conjugate of the original Fourier transform. Okay, so so you would take like take the take the Fourier transform here, then the Fourier then it means that the, that is the Fourier transform of the function f, and change the argument to negative of the with a negative sign, so you get that. Okay, so this is uh, this is this is equation twenty point seventy three. This is twenty point seven three. Okay, so this is part of the Percival theorem, and then uh, I think it's twenty three or twenty four. I think it's actually twenty point seventy four. Okay, 
And also if um, for the really special cases that uh, G is equals to F, then, uh, then F and F complex conjugate, the, the part is just the absolute value square of F that equals to F the absolute value of the free transform. So this is the special case for the con of Percival theorem. Okay, so, and then uh, the, this form, and then this form is, uh, if you write it in the bracket notation, so this equation, this equation is just, uh, this, this one is just, you can write like uh, this is just F G in the bracket notation is just the Fourier transform of F and Fourier transform of G, the product between the two. Okay, and this is, uh, this is implied F F is, uh, F and F. Okay, so and the, by this relationship, you can show that this is the, just you use the definition of adjoint operator. So, the fact that f and g, the scalar product between f and g equals to this one, equals this one, means that uh, f is uh, the unitary operator because the adjoint times the original operator equals to just the identity. So for all the adjoint operator is the inverse operator. Okay, so that is uh, another way to look at Fourier transform is a uh, unitary transformation. Okay, so all these are uh, the, the, the consequence of the definition of the convolution and then the Fourier transform. So next term we will uh, do some uh, consider the application and using some example to show application.